I love these characters. I fell in love with the characters. I fell in love with their relationships. I fell in love with their love stories. And so that was super important. As well as, um, as well as we took parts of the first book and the third book for the massive plot of the first season. In terms of the individual stories, um, Midnight Texas, one of the beautiful things about it is it's just a tiny little town. And so it moves at a tiny town pace. And when we adapted it for NBC, they're like, well, can we add a little, you know, incident? And, you know, honestly, if I can add incidents of vampires and vampires <laughs> and angels, you know, to give them my widest good part. So it was about adding more than subtracting. It was about keeping true the heart and the spirit of Midnight and its characters, but adding more um, yeah. incident. I mean, um, we both fell in love with the books immediately, so we came at it from a place of, you know, fondness and admiration. Yes, and wanting to um, keep, be true to that. Exactly. So, um, You'll see in the, throughout the course of the first ten episodes, there's so many things that are pulled from all, all three of the books, um, and there's still a lot more left for a second season, yeah. and a third season, and a fourth season. But like in any adaptation, you know, you, a, a writer needs to run with it and, and turn it into a living, three-dimensional um, show. So a lot of it is also invented by mm -hmm. one. How did you come upon this series? Um, I I read the, the books first um, with my uh, my executives at my company. We fell in love with it. We shared it with Monica. Um, we had never met. We did not, we had never worked together, and she shared the exact same passion yeah. that we had for for the for the world and the characters in the world. And the rest is history. We brought it to NBC. They fell in love with it as well. Um, totally allowed us to make the show that we we wanted to make. Um, Charlene was supportive and involved um, and, and, and passionate about her work as well and passionate about what we were doing um, in turning it into a show. So it was, it, you know, it really kind of was a love fest all around. No, and it was nice because I, had, I, had, I was working on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I love and it was a wonderful show, but I, I had had these tragedies in my life and I was like, I'm looking for something to write to like get my mind off of stuff. And because um, my mom-in-law and my mom had died, and I get these books, and my mom lived in a tiny little town with one stoplight, and my mother-in-law was a psychic. And I was like, I read two chapters, I'm like, okay, this is a friggin' sign, because I love these characters, and this is too on point. So, um, so for me, it was just a love fest, and honestly, the heart of the show, the theme of the show, that a group of very diverse people who have different talents, who bring different things to bear, who are really different from each other, but can come together to form a community that has each other's back in the face of adversaries, that to me felt so like perfect and beautiful and representative of what I want to see on television. So I had also had this lovely theme in the middle of it from which to spin out all these crazy supernatural stories because what I loved about it was this town of people who are so different from one another who really come together to create a community that's stronger together than the tagline, only outsiders fit in, really resonated with us when, when the marketing team came up with that. And um, we, 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 um, we, kind of, we kind of feel like Midnighters ourselves. Yeah, exactly. In, in the real world. <laughs> so how timely is a show like this with what's going on in the world right now and the, the fact that this, in the books, the, the first book has this white supremacist in it and, and everything, like how, you know, what, how perfect. <laughs> it was weird because we were shooting this white supremacist Ernest episode, and I was just like, I thought it would be like a cool puppy moment, not timely. <laughs> um, so I, was, I did not expect um, to be timely. 
exactly. Relevant. But at the same time, look, it's a message I live by. It's a truth that I live by. I have an interracial family. I live in a diverse city that I'm super proud of. This cast is a diverse cast of people who bring the, their diversity makes them stronger together. And so for me, this is an ideal way to like write a crazy supernatural show, which is also with this heart that I can believe in and value and I'm happy to put out the work. Were there anything that you added to the series, like characters that were not in the books? Or do you have any plans that you didn't? Yes. We have um, villains that come in, many of which are new, and they come to serve other characters. We learn a lot about Manfred from one villain who comes in. So yes, we sort of use our villains to also fill in our character stories. And, you know, hopefully we'll get a season two because there's some characters from the book that I really want to bring in. And, and Monica, Monica <laughs> um, really d dives deep in each episode into one Midnighter character. Um, um, and a lot of the backstories um, and and their, what they're made up of are invented by Monica um, as well. It's, they're kind of a, it's kind of a perfect blend of what Charlene set forth in her books and Monica kind of took over the finish line. Are you wearing an Adventure Time shirt? I am! Amazing. I just got my clothes! I know, my, my son bought it for me because I couldn't go to the floor. I was like, <laughs> oh, yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.